Well, hi everyone, I'm Don Smith, along with my good friend, colleague, and fellow Sony artisan, Gary Hart. And tonight we're in beautiful Cannon Beach, Oregon. We're near the end of a scouting trip that we've been here since Saturday. It's Tuesday night, so I think we've been going four days. Tomorrow will be our fifth day. And on this video, we'd like to talk to you about how we prepare and advertise a workshop, price a workshop, and actually run a workshop. So this is everything you've ever wanted to know about workshops. So hopefully you'll stick around and give us a watch. So Gary, we uh, have um, been up here now for day four. We started, we met Saturday morning at the Portland airport. We drove down to Bandon Beach. And this is the third time through scouting for two coastal Oregon workshops we plan on running in April. We're gonna do one in early April, one in late April. And people are probably wondering three times through, why, why are you guys doing that? And uh, for us, this is kind of the final trip through to really make sure everything's tightened down and we know where we're going, the times between our hotels and our locations, where all our locations are, backups on top of backups. So can you talk a little bit about, let's start with the preparation phase of these workshops and why it took us three trips to come up here. Yeah, well, I've, I've always felt like with my workshop locations, um, I need to have not just locations to, to fit all of the shoots that I have planned, but backup locations and backup locations for my backup locations because I don't know what conditions are going to be dealt mm -hmm. to me, you know, whether it's um, weather, storm, road closures, construction, park shutdowns. There can be any, any number of unexpected things that happen, and I have to be able to adjust to those things on the fly depending on what the situation is. So um, it's not enough. I, I don't feel comfortable going into a workshop n knowing that I have exactly the same number of locations as shoots I have planned. Um, so, and it, and it takes a while. Um, you know, you, you, can't do, you can't do all that in one, on one pass. Um, you know, in addition to that, we're looking at, um, you know, the light, what's the light, when is the best time to be at this spot? Um, you know, what, what conditions, what conditions would be ideal? This would be a great spot for overcast. Um, this would be a great spot for sunrise. This would be a great spot for sunset. Or I'm a huge night photography uh, fan. So um, I'd say, oh boy, I would love to do a moonrise here. Okay, when, when would the full moon be? And what month would be, would I be able to get it aligned? Um, you know, you can't do all that stuff on, on one pass. Um, and I don't want to be, I, you know, really needs, it's like, it's like a, an actor learning his lines, you know, where you don't want to be, you don't want to be reading the script as you're, as you're doing it. You want to be able to be thinking on the fly um, and, and, you know, doing things as the conditions dictate. And it just takes a certain level of familiarity. Yeah, I agree. We've been doing these now for 13 years. And to me, I always tell people, this is where all the heavy lifting comes and the preparation and when we leave tomorrow to, to get on a plane and go home we have to know when we come back in april this is set because we're going to be bringing clients and we're live and we're ready to go and the clients just want to see that we're prepared and we're not rushing out to locations as the lights happening that we've done our homework and we're very serious about doing our homework so preparation is is really key and i i know um I learned that from you. I met Gary about 13 years ago up in Yosemite in a blizzard. And I thought, geez, if this guy's crazy enough to be up here, there's, there's something <laughs> to it. But it, you know, it was just his passion and my passion for doing photography. And he actually, we stayed in touch. And a couple months later, I think you, you sent me an email and said, I'm doing a workshop in Yosemite. Would you be interested? And I can remember my wife, Barry, saying, I don't think you're going to like this. <laughs> and she couldn't have been more wrong because here I am 13 years later. Um, I think some of the side benefits I get out of running these workshops is just the great people we meet on these workshops. I've made so many really good friends, met so many really interesting people running these workshops. So 
Kind of expanding on the planning end of things, Gary, uh, can you take us through kind of a, a typical day of how we would go through a scouting portion of the workshop? Sure. sure. So, you know, the, on the first pass through, we're just kind of familiar, familiarizing ourselves with the area. Um, and we kind of get an idea. Maybe we, we're, we're, we're getting, establishing a framework. Um, but then we start, you know, matching locations with specific shoots. This would be a great shoot for the great location for our first sunrise shoot and and oh we could do a sunset here and and oh this would be a good secondary location all this thing uh kind of stuff um and then you know it's but it's important when we're planning this stuff we need to know you know you know how long what time we want to be there mm -hmm. you know if it's going to be sunrise you know it's it's better to be you know, 10 minutes early than one minute late uh, i know we've, we've always taken that philosophy um, and then how long, so then how long is it going to take us to get there? Uh, you know, these kind of things, um, you, you don't, the last thing in the world you want in a workshop is for your customers to see you figuring things out <laughs> on the fly. <laughs> I, yeah. As, yeah. As, you, as you go along, yeah, you know, we good. need to say, okay, so tomorrow morning we're leaving at 5.55, 5.55 AM. Um, and we also tell people, if you come out at 5:55, you're going to see exactly. tail lights. Um, so get out there a couple minutes early because we we make it really clear in the orientation we don't yeah. wait. Um, but the but the way we're able to do that is through these through the planning, knowing what time we want to be there and what time we have to leave to be there. So people aren't we're not getting people out there you know an hour early because you know we didn't plan it or we're not getting them out there five minutes late. Exactly. And I know we've been doing this for 13 years and we've kind of divided and conquered on the workload. Gary does a lot of the driving, plugs in everything in his GPS. And I'm kind of, I guess what you would call a copious note taker. I'm, right. I'm handwriting a backup. I'm putting it into notes on my phone. And I've even started on this trip doing video annotations with the GPS tag turned on which is pretty cool on these iPhones because it'll tell you exactly what park you're standing in. So uh, two months down the line, when I say, you know, we went to such and such state park, do you remember that one? And we're kind of going, boy, that's fuzzy. I can go right back to the video and I've got a video reference of it now. And I know exactly right. what we saw and what we liked about it. Right. Yeah. Uh, one of the things too, Gary, I want to bring up, uh, I think is very important that we've discovered over the 13 years of doing this, we're very particular about getting permits. Right. And I'm not sure if everybody that's leading workshops uh, take it so seriously. We, we I, have I to think, know. I think most do. I, yeah. I think, I, I get a sense that most do. So we don't want to make it sound like we're the exactly. only ones who are exactly. doing it this way. But, right. I, but it is very important. And we, are, we do know of people who don't do it. I, but I think most responsible workshop leaders are are doing the permit thing and it's not an easy process no it's not it's we're, ex, it costs money mm -hmm. and but more than the money it's the amount of time that goes in it goes in i <laughs> i can just, tell you zion national park alone i used to fill oh out a 70 gosh. page uh form to do two days in their park per yeah. year i'd combine it with bryce but it's important because we're always standing on somebody's property be it federal state local county private private um you have to know whose property you're standing on and who do you go to get permission right. and the proper way to get it we carry the, the the proper amount of insurances more so than than acquired i know i cover cover and you you cover double what's required um and the permits are important and insurances. So we, we take care of the business side and we think that's very important. It, it's not the most enjoyable part of what we not do. Not at all. But, it's, <laughs> but, it, is but it is an important part. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so whether you take our workshops or somebody else, a good question to ask your instructor, do they carry the proper permits? Um, so let's go to stage, I guess, number two of the three stages I wanted to talk about. And uh, we, so we've got the planning down. Now our first time through, we did this well over a year ago, and that's really important because not only do we have to get a structure and a framework and figure out where a lot of the icons are, but we, we've got to be able to photograph these icons so we uh, can put these pictures up and they're pictures that people are gonna go, wow, I wanna go do those right. types of pictures. Um, so do you want to talk a little to how we uh, go about doing that? Yeah, so we, so we um, do some research before 
we show up at a location, um, we're reading, either getting books, we're doing Google search, we're checking maps, Google Earth, you know, whatever it might be uh, to get an idea. Um, and sometimes we'll just Google a location and look at pictures from that location mm -hmm. and see what other people are doing. Um, and so we get a sense of what the icons are there um, and, the, and the overall area. Um, because we understand people sign up for workshops you know, a lot of times they want to shoot the iconic. Yeah. It's kind of, icon has gotten to be kind of a cliche, but I mean, it's really true. They do want to shoot the iconic locations, but we want to give people much more than just the icons. We, we understand, you know, we're on the Oregon coast, so we do Bandon Beach. We do Cannon Beach, you know, Haystack Rocks, right outside the window right here. Um, and people want to do that. But, you know, another great example would be, you know, this afternoon we were, we found a little trail the, that meandered along down by a creek that uh, ends up at the ocean. It's through a redwood forest. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's not your standard location. It's not the place that everybody's going. It's not, it's not as if we discovered it. I mean, other people have been there, but it's, it's not the kind of place where you would go find a picture and say, oh, I want to go there. But it's absolutely beautiful. And it's the kind of place our, our workshop participants enjoy photographing because they can get things that they don't see on every other website. They, they can get their own, unique, their own unique images. So it's important, one, to deliver the iconic spots, but two, to be able to allow people to find things that are uniquely theirs. So it's, we, we do try to balance those things. Exactly. So then we come back through and we, we I know Gary will process some of his favorites and I'll process some of mine. We'll get them together and through a lot of file sharing, either if it's he's in charge of the workshop or I'm in charge of it, one of us will build the web page out. And then we have to run expenses and basically the only, I mean it's as simple as this, we know what we want to make out of a workshop that makes it worth our while. The rest of it is expense. You put the two numbers together and voila, there's the cost of the workshop. It's not rocket science. Uh, but, you know, that's based on that 12 people sign up for our workshops is kind of our standard 12 to 13. I just did a workshop three, four months ago in Kauai, and I had seven people signed up. Four, for medical reasons, had to drop out. I don't cancel a workshop. I right. went to Kauai with my wife, and we ran a full five-day workshop with three participants. And I don't cancel, and I know you don't cancel yeah. workshops. Your poor wife, too. Yeah, it was, it, don't feel sorry for us. It was. <laughs> <laughs> and then darn, I had to go to the Scottish Highlands right after. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. I always tell people if, if because I do get, I'll get emails from time to time. Well, you know, what if the workshop doesn't fill? Or I'll say, you know, is, is the workshop still on? If you signed up for a workshop, um, and, and so far, thank, thank goodness, you know, this has never happened, but if only one person signs up, you're getting a private workshop. I won't cancel, and, and you here. feel the same way. Same we here. won't cancel due no, to- it's not fair to the clients. Low enrollment, but you know, so far we've been real fortunate and virtually all of our workshops yeah. fill, they fill yeah. you know, way in advance. We've so been very lucky. Had to deal with that. Okay, so we've talked about planning, we've talked about how we kind of price the workshop and put it up on the website. Now hopefully we get a lot of people signing up and we won't get into how we do all our advertising. That could be a whole nother video. Now it comes time to actually run the workshop. Could you go through a typical day of our sure. workshop? Sure. Um, so, as I said a minute ago, um, we kind of have a sense for how, how early we need to be leaving to get to the location where, where we want to go. So we'll, we'll notify the group, okay, we're leaving at such and such a time. When we say we're leaving at that time, that is the time we're leaving. Mm -hmm. And we feel very strongly we are not it's not fair to the whole group to wait. Exactly. So, so um, we say be out there early. Um, cars are loaded because we want to be get, get the cars loaded and moving down the road um, at no later than this time. Um, and then we'll go, um, we'll probably get there a little bit early, which is fine. Um, fantastic light. Um, photographers don't often don't realize how good the shooting is mm -hmm. before the eyes can register that yeah. much light. Um, so we're encouraging people to, to get the cameras out early and shoot. And then, of course, we can watch the light and the color come up, which is, which is always really nice. Um, and then we'll go to one or two spots after that, um, depending on the location. You know, every location is a little bit different. Um, but we'll, we'll go um, 
you know, once we're done with the morning shoot, and we'll keep shooting as long as the shooting is good. So the example I like to use is Yosemite, you know, where, or, you know, you could say, you know, you could do Bryce or, you know, whatever, you know, I do Yosemite, Don does Bryce. Um, if, let's say it's snowing. Um, that's the best photography you can, you can ever imagine. Well, we're not going to go running inside just because it's breakfast time. So we tell people, you know, pack, pack something to eat, you know, something to snack on um, because the, the photography trumps uh, meals or, or anything yeah. else. So, but typically, you know, normal conditions will shoot, you know, maybe to mid morning and then we give everybody a break. Um, and so they can rest. Um, maybe they missed, they skipped the shower because they got up so early so they can, they can clean up and, and, um, you know, process images, uh, prepare for the image review, which we usually start at around one o'clock. Okay. Um, we'll do a couple hours of image review and other training, whether it's workflow, um, it can be specific to the workshop, maybe we'll do training on night photography, um, maybe we'll do some hyperfocal focus or exposure metering. We kind of monitor the group to see what they, what they might need, um, and, but we'll do a couple hours of training and then give a small break, when I say small, maybe 30 minutes, something like that. Um, for people to go back and get their gear and then we meet and we go out for our afternoon and sunset shoot and sometimes even stay out after dark. Um, not every night usually, but um, maybe one night in the workshop we'll do a night shoot if we can, if the conditions call for it. Yeah. So that's, a, that's a typical day and as I say, it varies a lot depending on the workshop. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really actually a long day, but I know personally I'm more relaxed when the workshop begins because I've done my homework. Mm -hmm. if, if, if you don't do your homework and you go in for a final exam, you should be nervous. If we don't do our homework and we come into a, doing a workshop right. where we're taking clients' yeah. money, we should be nervous. Yeah. We, we know we've done our homework and we've done it thoroughly. Mm -hmm. And we're, ve we're as, as prepared as we can. Uh, I don't think we've learned how to control the weather yet, no. but we are working on that one. So um, let me talk about, I guess, my workshops and sure. where I'm going. We've mentioned some of them. I do a couple in Big Sur, thanks to you. You got me started, oh gosh, about 11 years ago doing them down there. That's close to where I live. I've expanded out now. Uh, I already said next week I'm doing Arches Canyonlands. I do Bryce Zion. I do one in Northern Arizona in March. That's fun. We start in the Grand Canyon, go out to the Slot Canyons and Page, finish up in Sedona. Then we'll go on to New Zealand. Then I go to Africa. That's been fun. We went to Namibia last year. We're going to Zimbabwe and this year and Botswana, uh, doing more wildlife shooting. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. And then I come out to the Grand Teton um, and I'm going to be doing two workshops out there. Um, I'm probably missing one somewhere. We're going to be in Patagonia in February and uh, the Scottish Highlands. Uh, I'm looking forward to that in October. So I kind of made, um, you know, for the kind of the final stretch of my career, I really wanted to do about five to six internationals and I'll be up to five. I think that's enough. I underestimated how hard the travel was gonna be um, and we'll leave it be and we'll kind of tinker with it as, as we go. So why don't we hear about some of your workshops? Yeah. Um well, let's see. I'll be starting my 2019 schedule um, in a couple of weeks in Death Valley. Uh, I try to schedule my workshops around some event to make it special. Death Valley, it's uh, full moon. We'll do moonlight. We do moon, moonrise, but moon sets. Um, and we go over to Alabama Hills and do Mount Whitney, too, for one day. Um, then Yosemite, I do a February workshop around Horsetail Fall. I do March and April around a full moon where we do a moon bow. Um, and then I do my Grand Canyon raft trip, which is always a highlight. Uh, I always schedule that one around moonless night so we can do the Milky Way from about one of the darkest places on earth, uh, bottom of the Grand Canyon. Um, and then uh, we'll do New Zealand together. We'll do the Grand Canyon monsoon together where we'll photograph lightning. Uh, I've got Hawaii Big Island, where we're going to go up to the top of Mauna Kea, do a Milky Way shoot, um, among other things. And then my Eastern Sierra Fall Color, that's, you know, lots of variety there. Um, and then another Yosemite um, Fall Color uh, reflections, that kind of thing. So it's a, it's a full... 
it, it keeps, it, us, it keeps yeah. us out of trouble. Let's yeah, put it that way. Right. And uh, <laughs> and we both have understanding wise that I have to say is yes, uh, we do. you yeah. need that if you're going to be in this yes, business. Um, so that kind of wraps it up. I think we've gone through how we prepare for a workshop, how we go ahead and get it on our website. We price it. We run the workshop. And really, we'd like to invite all of you to come along. The one thing I have to say is we just have a great time. Uh, we've both been in this business so long that we like to keep our workshops fun. But on the other hand, we keep it very serious as far as the learning that we like to do. And we like to tailor it to each individual person. I know I've had people in my workshop. One woman came in with a camera still in her Christmas wrapping and had never opened the box. And in a day, we had her up and running and she was making beautiful images all the way on the other spectrum to professionals who are in other genres, like per, uh, portrait professionals or wedding. Um, we've had architectural photographers. We had another landscape photographer from France one time come in and join us. So we run the whole gamut. Our groups are small enough. We have a six to one ratio on instructors. And we really kind of tailor the workshops to your need. Um, so before we, uh, we kind of wrap this up, anything else you would like to add that uh, Maybe I've skipped, or you skipped? No, I, want, I think you mentioned the people. Um, I just want to emphasize what a joy the, the people part of the workshops has been. It, um, it's, it, you know, it's really, I, I was not expecting to, to get so much pleasure, as much pleasure from the people yeah. aspect of it as we do get. You know, I, wanted to, I wanted to be able to visit these locations. I wanted to be able to photograph them. I thought workshops would be a good, a good way to do it. But the people, I get at least as much pleasure from the people as I do from the photography. Not just the relationships I've made, but watching other relationships form. These friendships that form uh, right before our eyes um, that, that become lifetime friendships. Uh, photographers that, that travel all over the world together who met in our workshops. And that's, yeah. that's a real... That's yeah. Yeah, I, I have to echo Gary's sentiments about um, really, I, you know, the, the, the workshop people and the friendships developed have been incredible for me too. And I've made uh, some really, really good, yeah. lasting, long friends out of these workshops. And you know, it, it, it's, it's a two-way street. I mean, we're here to teach and share our knowledge, a lifetime of knowledge that you and I have both gained. But in return, we get a lot back from the yeah. workshop people. Yeah. We really do. That's I agree. Cool. And I, I want to add, too, this just came into my mind. A couple of times, a um, handful of times, we've kind of, uh, we've had people come to us in near tears. Yes, we have. Uh, <laughs> thinking that they, I just don't have this. I'm no good at this. First uh, I've tried other workshop, workshops. Yeah. And, the, and, and we've, we've talked these people down, so to speak, off the ledge. Mm -hmm. And we've built them up and given them some encouragement and um, some of these people have gone on to yeah. just be exceptional photographers. That's true. And that was a crisis That's true. where they could have really split and gone away right. from this art form and never come back. That's right. Yeah, and that's, that's right. something that yeah. over the years has been very meaningful to me to uh, yeah. have and, seen happen. And we're not saying that we're the ones who, are resp who, who taught them everything to make them great photographers. But we were just there to to encourage them at the right time when they needed it, and then you know, and then they were able to do it themselves, which exactly. is which is yeah. really very rewarding. Well, as you can see, I think you you maybe have gotten a sense. Gary, re, Gary, and I really enjoy what we do. Yeah, we, do. we we put a lot of heart and soul into it, um, but I think in the end we offer really uh, a, a really good workshop. Um, if you've ever want to join us. And we would hope those of you seeing us for the first time or those yeah. of you that have kind of been following our work on social media or our blogs or our writings and outdoor photographer, you've gotten a little more sense about who we are and how we treat this business. It's very serious to us. This is what we do. It's not a part-time venture. Um, anything else before we wrap it up here, Gary? No, I think that's, okay. I think that's good. All right. So... Uh, as I said, Gary will be heading off to Arizona to, uh, um, Grant, uh, excuse me, Death Valley yeah. <laughs> next week. I'll be heading to Utah, <laughs> Moab, Utah, for Arches Canyonlands. Um, and we're going to be wrapping it up here from beautiful Cannon Beach, Oregon. And until next time, take care. Happy shooting. <laughs>